Hey, this is Drew, aka The Skill Sonographer, and this is going to be an easy to understand tutorial for performing aortic ultrasound screenings. The types of patients that will be receiving this exam might have risk factors like smoking, a family history of AAA, abdominal aortic aneurysms, hypertension, or high cholesterol. Also, men over the age of 50 might be at a higher risk. One of my biggest tips for learning how to perform a new type of exam is understanding why you are performing the exam. So, what are you looking for in an aortic ultrasound? We are looking for any enlargement of the artery that could be caused by the previously mentioned risk factors. Also, we're looking for the accumulation of atherosclerotic plaque within the vessel since high cholesterol and smoking can definitely cause that. Now let's get into the exam. I always look for the abdominal aorta in the transverse plane first with the notch facing myself. Like in my other tutorials, this white arrow represents the transducer and the direction of the arrow represents the direction that the notch of the transducer should be facing for that image. The proximal aorta is one of the trickiest to image because of the presence of possible bowel gas in that area. Now we should start right below the sternum and look for the round vessel that is posterior to the liver. This will be the proximal aorta. We want to be careful not to image the IVC as the aorta. Now, the IVC, the inferior vena cava, will be running through the liver, not posterior to the liver like the aorta, as you can see here. Then, we are going to measure the diameter of the vessel. I usually measure outer to outer. You want to measure anterior to posterior or front to back. Next, you can turn on the vessel to longitudinal and have the notch, of course, facing the patient's head. Again, make sure you're not on the IVC by slightly angling the probe towards the patient's left side. The IVC is slightly to the right of the midline. Now, I want you to note that the proximal aorta only extends from the diaphragm to the first branch of the aorta. So, Anything below this is not the proximal aorta. This is the proximal aorta. This is not the proximal aorta. Do not be measuring that as the proximal aorta. If you cannot see accurately measure the proximal aorta between those two areas, then just put that you could not see the vessel in that area and move on. So you will obtain the 2D image then measure again in longitudinal outer to outer and here you also want to image with the color doppler on we usually make sure that the color flow is represented in red here now you don't simply want to assign the color of the vessel to be red without really understanding the direction the true direction of the flow you want to make sure that the blood flow is going towards the patient's feet and then assign the color to red. If you do not know how to do that, I highly suggest you check out the circulatory skill set. It will break down all of that for you and make sure and help you make sure you're not misdiagnosing any patients or misrepresenting their blood flow. Now for proper color filling, you want to make sure you have a good angle on the probe. This will entail a little bit of heel toeing of the probe to elongate the vessel and have an angle on it at the same time. It is usually difficult to get color flow in the proximal aorta due to color flash from the pumping of the heart. So you will have to be patient with yourself and sometimes you just cannot get a picture for perfect image. I just happen to have a good patient here. And no, this was not a real patient, just in case my job is listening. Now, you want to make sure that you have your angle correct on and that the angle is parallel to the walls of the vessel, as parallel as you can possibly get it. Now you want to measure the spectral Doppler waveform with the peak velocity at the highest velocity. You can also measure the end diastolic velocity if you like, just before the upstroke. Now we can move distal to the first two aortic branches, which are usually the celiac vein, the celiac artery, and the superior mesenteric artery. So now we are in the mid aorta. Once you have the nice round image in your vessel, you can take the 2D image and then measure from anterior to posterior. Then you can turn on the vessel in longitudinal, take that 2D image, and then measure again anterior to posterior. Then add your color and 
take your spectral Doppler waveform. Again, you need to try to have a little bit of an angle on the vessel. Now let's look at the distal aorta in transverse. I will usually have the vessel in transverse, have one nice round circle in my image of the aorta, then I'll scan inferiorly slowly, slowly until I see two circles instead of one, and then I'll scan back proximally and make sure to image the distal aorta because that's where I know I'm right above the bifurcation. So when I have my nice round image, I take the 2D transverse, measure anterior to posterior, and also take a longitudinal image, measure anterior to posterior again, and take my spectral Doppler waveform. Now this is where it can get tricky. The aortic bifurcation. You cannot always see these vessels because a lot of patients have a lot of bowel gas in that area. So what I do, I turn on the vessel again in transverse. So I have the distal aorta in transverse and I will slowly scan inferiorly till I see that one circle branch off into two circles. This is very difficult at first to get your eyes to, to seeing this, but you will get there. Now listen closely. The vessel on the left side of the screen is not the left common iliac vein. It's the right common iliac vein. So let's just think about it. Look at this diagram here. This is the patient's right side. So this is their right common iliac artery. So this is the right side of the, the patient. This is the right common iliac artery. Left side of the patient, right side of the screen, but this is the left common iliac artery. So when I have my transverse image, I usually will label which one is which, right and the left. Then I'll measure the vessels in that same area. Then I'll measure the vessels. Now with the iliac arteries, you want to scan each one as distantly as you possibly can see it to make sure that there are no aneurysms also on that vein, on that artery. A lot of times the aneurysms on the common iliac arteries will be near the branch of the internal iliac artery. So you wanna scan as far distally as you can to see if there's an enlargement that is greater than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. So next, I will turn slowly on that right common iliac artery. You just wanna eye it and slowly turn on it. Now, if you think you lost that right common iliac artery, here's a trick. You can sweep the transducer, angle it all the way out to the patient's right, then slowly angle it back in. You can do this with or without color flow. So if you have it with color flow, then you will be waiting until you see a vessel with flashing blood flow, not pooling blood flow, because that would be the common iliac vein, but flashing blood flow. That will be the common iliac artery, the first one that you come in contact with. So then I will take the color and the pulse wave Doppler image. Now for the left common iliac, I will do the same thing, slowly turn on it or angle all the way out to the patient's left. Slowly angle in with the color flow on until I see some flashing color flow. The first vessel that I come in contact with should be the left common iliac vessel, the left common iliac artery in the pelvis. And then I'll take my color and pulse wave Doppler image. And there you have it. That is how I perform an aortic ultrasound tutorial. Just make sure that the abdominal aorta is no greater than three centimeters throughout and the common iliac arteries are no greater than or equal to 1.5 centimeters, equal to as well, will be considered an aneurysm. If your facility has a different protocol than what I discussed, then definitely leave that into in the comments so I can see how other facilities perform this exam. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.